Well, Bell Ann. Yes. So here we are at World All Day Celebration. Yes. Our Christmas edition. And this will be the third uh, time we've done this at Christmas time. And we hope for our members out there in 66 countries that this has become part of the uh, festive season of various holidays, whether it's Hanukkah or Christmas or Kwanzaa, yes. that we're a part of your lives at that time of the year. And for us American kids and kids all over the world, they're really starting in 1950, but really in 1939, yes. there was a tradition of a remarkable movie. A remarkable and magical. Magical. Yes. Created from a magical storybook. Mm -hmm. So it had the generation before those children, and it's gone all the way to right here today. That's right. And so what we're focusing on is the character Dorothy Gale, who is played by the 13-year-old uh, Judy Garland. Yes. And she had to work very hard to get that part. She had to snag it out from under Shirley Temple. That's right, who was, I think, under contract elsewhere. elsewhere. Is that the story? Mm -hmm. But when it came down to the fact that Shirley just couldn't sing the way that Judy could. Nobody could sing like Judy. That's right. What a voice. What a gift from yeah. God. Yes. Yeah. And the interesting thing is I've had kind of, you know, you're one person removed from We've had two people in our lives that have been friends with, Ju were friends with Judy Garland. And, what a treasure. Mm -hmm, and both have a very, very special uh, fondness for her. And she did have brains, yes. heart, yes. and courage. Absolutely. Uh, and then the third thing that uh, we've had a very unusual uh, experience, which dolls have taken us in all different directions and different places, but we have actually walked on the original yellow brick road wow. that was salvaged and saved. And it's in a very special private place. And it's kind of, you know, you just want to you know, get down there and give it a little kiss. That's so, right. That's right. Uh, if you were around in 1938 and you happen to be in the industry, uh, in the movie making industry, Everyone wanted to, to go on the set and see that beautiful munchkin land. Absolutely. In Technicolor. In Technicolor. That's right. And uh, all of those people worked so hard for that new uh, technology and how they had to film it with multiple cameras. And, it was ingenious. Yeah. They were never not hot. <laughs> they were always hot. So... Uh, and one thing I can say that is, as we prepared for this, I looked at a lot of photographs of Judy Garland with, and I'm a member of the Judy Garland experience and all of that that's on uh, Facebook. Uh, but it's interesting, whenever you see Judy with a doll, she seems to be very happy. So maybe that in a way, I don't know that she was a doll girl, but maybe since she really didn't have a childhood. She did she, not have a childhood. She probably will have to ask Liza yeah. and Lorna if she liked dolls. That's right. Yeah. I mean, she was she was in the business in vaudeville uh, with the Gum Sisters. That's right. Frances Ethel Gum. And that's her how original she, name. So that's how, how she, um, you know, when she dropped in and sang, um, Dear Mr. Gable, oh. she seemed like a little kid, but she was already a seasoned pro by then. Yes, she was. She was a seasoned pro. Yeah. And Absolutely. Anyway, so the buzz is all over town that they're making this masterpiece yes. that's going to go on to be the number one movie ever created, and that is from the American, American Film Institute's own Data. Absol it's timeless. Mm -hmm. So it's timeless. So ideal. Yes. Ideal thought. Well, well, wait a minute. That's right. So, do you want to tell them about? Well, they jumped on the bandwagon. Don't forget, Shirley Temple and the Shirley Temple doll pulled Ideal out of bankruptcy, created by Bernard Lipfert. Of course, 
was we all know Shirley Temple is extremely well documented, came in a variety of sizes from 11 inch to 25 inch, and all of the movies for Shirley were made, they were represented by her movies. And this was, that doll was a phenomenon during the depression. Every little girl wanted, wanted a Shirley Temple doll. And as the years went by, they recreated it. There was makeup, Shirley. There was Shirley in the cowboy's outfit. I can go on and on. I can, it's a whole nother deal. 1939, things are kind of waning for Shirley Temple. She's getting, she's doing some, just horrified the studios. She's growing up. She's not the little seven-year-old type going around anymore. And they're continuing to look for a vehicle. So they glom on to The Wizard of Oz. And the thing is, the movie has not at the time come out. So they created the Judy Garland doll for Dor as Dorothy, and it became an unusual, it's a harder doll to find. Came in three sizes, 18 inch, 16 inch, I believe the smallest one. I'd like to say 14 inch approximately. I might be off a half of inch or so. Human hair wig, again, this is a Bernard Lipford design on this doll. And she suffers the fate of many of the composition dolls with the glassy eyes. They've, they've blasted, but we love her and we can forgive her for that. Has a human hair wig and is this a rayon? You're so wonderful with the costumes. Uh, yes, it is a rayon. Mm -hmm. And they actually, these dresses also, I've seen them in red, which is really well, quite unusual. I mean, I think that Adrian, who designed the costumes for the Wizard of Oz, had to give a little bit of cooperation yes. without giving it up. But they also did before they, f they already started filming and they changed things a few times. Right, I think so, Judy Garland at first for the show, they put her in blonde hair because yeah, they did it was a gonna of, be, mm -hmm. and then they realized this isn't gonna so work. So they changed the costume a couple yes. of times. But I think this is very, very close to uh, the ultimate. Um, End of the costume. Yeah. And you must forgive me because this was the doll that I originally got. I think I bought her when eBay, can I say eBay? Sure, eBay, you can. First opened up, it was my first eBay purchase and she was nude. <laughs> and she was also bald. And I spent a tremendous amount of money for a doll in that condition. But through the years, as we all know as collectors, you can all of a sudden, something will turn up. The original wig will turn up, which I found, and the original outfit uh, turned up. But you'll have to forgive me, she does not have her original shoes. They were a, a dark colored shoe, probably, if I'm not mistaken, dark brown or black. And they were very plain, because Ideal didn't understand the concept of the ruby red slippers. Well, I mean, and, and that again, was a huge that thing. changed too. Yes, there, did it really? Yes, there was um, a, a, the first prototype pair of uh, slippers. And actually, I believe, I know there's a lot of people in uh, Ozland, um, the, in the book there, Silver slippers. Oh my goodness! And, but silver and Technicolor. It did not work. No. And then they 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 changed the 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 design of the slipper. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the Debbie Reynolds collect collection, there's the the first slipper. Oh my which goodness! Which is kind of like a little Aladdin shaped thing. Right. And um, uh, interesting. So so I think in, does in the Smithsonian you wouldn't really know. That's right. Does the does the Smithsonian have an original pair? I yes, think. Yes, but what's funny? Uh, but what's funny about their pair is they have one shoe that goes with another pair. Uh -huh. <laughs> so at some point you'd think that the the two parties could say, let's get both of our... I know, somebody needs to fix that. So anyway, I recreated, she had to have ruby lead slippers, so please forgive me. The shoes and the socks are not original. And uh, this uh, Toto, she had to have a Toto, so he's a, uh, a, a stiff, little stiff uh, schnauzer that was in very bad condition that I dye dipped to uh, become a Toto. So he has now, a better new life. Now, did she come with Toto? She for... did not. She did okay. not come with a Toto. So she came um, in this original outfit with the plain shoes in three sizes and a, hand, and a hang tag. The doll was not, from my understanding, terribly successful. And it was the things in 1939 were starting to deteriorate 
in Europe and things were changing in this country. They were getting ready. People were very concerned about what was happening in Europe and they were getting ready to go to war. The Pearl Harbor had not yet been bombed, but that was coming. And I think another thing that why The Wizard of Oz was successful in its release, but it wasn't successful enough to um, recoup the huge costs. Right. So then, initially, right, right. right. And then what happens is, um, you know, the studios move on. And when the studio moves on, Ideal's going to move on. They did. Yeah, to the next next thing. That's right. And there it was. The film was released, re-released, pretty much every year around right. Christmas time. But it wasn't until television. Television. So. Oh my! And I lived in Kansas, and I loved every time when the tornado came down. Our grade school was in a tornado, and I was so. And it was a very Catherine Carpenter back in Overland Park, Kansas, in the 1960s. So. Uh, it had a special extra meaning for me being a Kansas girl. Sure, you know, sure. And enjoying The uh, Wizard of Oz. Well, and, and by the way, we are, this year is Judy Garland's 100th birthday. Wow. But it is not until sh- um, uh, June, I believe. Okay. I believe June is her birthday. So we will be coming back and showing more Judy, but today I think we wanted to really um, focus in on the tradition of The Wizard of Oz yes. and the holiday season and how it's become part of uh, our culture. The American culture and the children's, and she still captures, cu- that's right, children's imaginations. Mm-hmm. And Judy, the Judy Garland doll has been recreated Many since times. then over and over and over by myriad companies. And I think, like Shirley, Judy, and Dorothy Gale are everybody's friend. Yes. You know, it's a, it's a safe place to go. Well, I have a little surprise to show you because uh, those of the, you that are following our uh, YouTube channel, uh, which, uh, and, and on Facebook too, it can get you to, to our project of Gay Gardens. And it's a, a property that we've acquired, and it came with a doll collection. And it belonged uh, to a friend of ours, and a friend of yours, yes. whose name was Gay Ward. A wonderful person. So in the purchase of the farm, uh, or the gardens, because there's no animals on it, um, there's, there's the doll collection. And there's lots of magical things in the collection. But I was shocked and gobsmacked by one particular item. So I I'm waiting wait. for your reaction. All right. We'll put we'll move Judy out of the way. Ah! <laughs> oh my stars. Oh heavens, look who's here. We're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, he's magnificent. This is the very, very, very rare, and I don't use the word rare often. This is the scarecrow, and I think this was, to my recollection and knowledge, this is the only other doll in the line that they created. And he is, he is cloth. So how? What is he? Eighty-two years old? You said? Eighty-three. Eighty-three years old. And he is an incredible and amazing, he's a little faded, but we forgive him that because he's well, not, so rare and spectacular. I think, I think that the scarecrow was a little faded too, wasn't he? Oh my, he sure was. Ray Bolger. Yes. And what? And this actually, we see, I see Ray. Hi, Ray. I see a little bit of Ray in his face. He's absolutely stunning. And this is, I am so privileged to see and touch this doll because you don't see it. And you I, don't I see love him. all of the um, I love all of the characters. But yeah. the fact is Dorothy that and the he was scare, special. They are they spend the most time together. They are it's, he was a special he's friend. He's the brains. Yes. You know, uh, he's looking for his brains. That's but, right. But I think the thing is that 
I, we have, in our 40 year career, we have handled a lot of things. I have never seen this. I have never seen this either, in person. Yeah. I've seen it in a book, yeah. I've seen, <laughs> but I have never seen him uh, in person and live, and this is a real big privilege for me. Thank you so much and, for and bringing I would him have, out. I would have had um, a little bit of a, um, wondering, is this real or not? But then we have, miraculously, there's the hang tag. The hang, can you get a close up of that hang tag? Because it really is, it puts everything together. How fantastical he is. This is phenomenal. Oh, I love this, I just love him. This is beautiful, he's beautiful. My gosh. And I, I, I think that if the, uh, they would have probably gone on and made the other characters. Yes, if, yeah. Uh, um, it was all, it was all gone, about a profit. Mm -hmm. Things got a little a profit. different. Well, we we will <gasps> later oh, on in the wonderful. year we will commemorate uh, in doll form the remarkable life of Judy Garland because there's more. more That's right. Things. Ideal made other composition dolls mm -hmm. when she sang with Deanna Durbin. They did the two of them together, but they were the teen girls. Mm -hmm. And we will, uh, but I, I thought we needed to acknowledge oh, heavens, a century, yes. uh -huh. which um, there's not many people that have done work in their lives that they're just as big now as they were in 1939. That's right. Nobody could interpret a song quite like Judy Garland. That's true. That's true. Spectacular. So, shall you? Come on, you can, you can interpret a song. Just give them a little bit. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. It makes me cry when I sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. We'll be back later. Bye-bye. Bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.